Okay, in our last video, we got introduced to Scanner. Now we're actually going to use it. As always, I invite you to code along with me. Don't just watch the video, look at source code and think you got it figured out. Let's hop right in. So this one we're doing is called moon weight converters. So a person's weight on a celestial body is dependent on a number of factors. His or her mass, the mass of the body, how far the body, blah, 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 blah. However, we can simplify this. So here's, here's the idea behind my program, right? I want to figure out what would a person's weight be on the moon. That easy. What we can do is set up a conversion. We can set up a ratio effectively, right? We figure out what is Earth's gravity. We figure out the celestial's body, in this case, the moon. We have this ratio of the moon's acceleration due to gravity. It says the gravity here, and I know physics nerds are going to get mad at me because gravity and acceleration due to gravity are different things, but I only got so much space on a PowerPoint. So we're going to figure out the moon's acceleration due to gravity, divide that by the Earth's acceleration due to gravity, and then we have our ratio. Then we just take your Earth weight, multiply it by this ratio, and there you go. That's how much you would weigh on the moon. So we need to figure out Earth's acceleration due to gravity. Some of you already know this, but this calculation I think is interesting and I think you'll appreciate it because here we have an equation, right? We got G times mass divided by radius squared. We talked about exponents, we talked about order of operations stuff, but have we done an exponent in Java? Hmm, okay. So G is the gravitational constant. This is just a number in physics, just like pi, it is a constant. Mass is mass done in kilograms, and radius is radius in meters. Yes, this is the mass of Earth in kilograms. This is the radius of Earth in meters. You can Google these values, but they're right here. And as you can see, as you expect, these are like really, really large numbers. And so we are using E, scientific notation talked about scientific notation in a previous video and here I'm using lowercase e you could use uppercase but I feel like the uppercase kind of blends in with the numbers so what I want to do is basically get this equation and these numbers into my program to begin with okay so let's um, I need something I need IntelliJ okay I'm in IntelliJ I'm gonna make a new project by going to file new project Our JDK is already selected, so we'll go next. We'll go next. I'm already in the principles folder, so I can name this one moon weight. Fortunate for us, IntelliJ is making that subfolder. It's going, I'm gonna tell it to finish, and we'll do it in this window. I'm going to expand my project folder. I'm gonna right click on the SRC and do a new Java class. This one I'm calling moon weight. So we have our class header. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a main method. Inside of the class body, I'm gonna say public static void main string args. Again, the sooner that you got this memorized, the better off you will be. Sorry, I'm gonna to try to pull up some old source code to make sure I do it the big brain way. Okay, uh, so I'm kind of breaking down this program into its parts. The first thing I want to do is figure out Earth's acceleration due to gravity. So what I'm going to do is effectively, oh no, where did my slides go? I effectively want to plug in this formula and I want to use these values. Now I kind of invite you to use some variables here because that's actually going to clean it up, right? Like I could plug in these values directly in this formula and perform the calculation there. But we can basically translate this formula a little bit easier, right? So anyway, so I am in IntelliJ. I'm gonna create some variables, some variables to store those values. And the first one I'm gonna want is my gravitational constant. Now, we're going to need a variable name, I'm sorry, a data type, which is gonna be double, and a variable name. I'm gonna go with G. The reason that I'm gonna go with G is because that's what they do in physics, right? Capital G in physics is the gravitational constant. Normally, 
I would say like a one letter variable name is not very descriptive, but for here, it's perfect. The gravitational constant is 6.67 e to the negative 11. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that in here. I'm gonna create this variable. So it's effectively what I'm doing here with this variable. It seems like a little bit of an extra step, but I'm effectively labeling this number, right? From this point on, I just gotta refer to g. And if I end up reusing g in multiple spots, which I, spoiler alert, technically will, um, then this variable becomes really useful. So I don't have to type this multiple times. Let's go ahead with some more variables. I'm gonna create one that can store my mass. Now, we're going to long-term have the moon's mass in here as well. So just calling this variable mass will be a little bit misleading. This is going to be very particular. It is the Earth's mass. So I'm going to name my variable as such. Okay, the mass of the Earth is going to be 5.97e to the 24. Okay, the last thing I need for this calculation, if I flip back to it, right, we need the radius. It's the radius of Earth measured in meters. So I'm gonna create a double, and you guessed it, we're gonna call it Earth radius. And that is, uh, what, 6.37 6 e to the 6. So, I like this program because we end up using some scientific notation. There's a physics tie-in. Long-term, we're going to bring in scanner. When I say long-term, I mean literally in this video, just towards the end. But here we go. I've got these variables. I'm using scientific notation to plug these bad boys in. I'm effectively labeling them with these variables so that I can just refer to G or earth mass or earth radius when what I want is the number. This is sweet, okay? Here would be a good spot to pause. Well, let me, let me get the variable started first, right? I'm going to create a double called earth gravity. It's technically acceleration due to gravity, but earth's gravity is going to be this formula. This would be a good spot to see, can you translate a formula such as this one into Java code? I invite you to pause and try it out. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in, right? Earth gravity, our formula is G. Well, in my program, that's just called G. So G times multiplication in Java is done as such mass in my program mass is not mass it's technically earth mass so earth mass okay divided by radius and in my program radius is technically earth radius but earth radius squared okay we haven't actually learned this yet right how do we do exponents um some might be thinking like an up caret two you see that IntelliJ gets mad at me about that. We're gonna learn how to do exponents at a later date. Since this one is so easy, right? It's just Earth radius, or it's just square, radius squared. And our program's gonna be Earth radius squared. We're, we can just take Earth radius and do Earth radius times Earth radius. And here I've effectively translated the formula into Java code. G, our gravitational constant times the mass divided by earth radius squared. Now, there's a problem here with this. I hope you notice it. It'd be a good time to see if you can figure it out. But if we look at this formula, I haven't translated it exactly because think about order of operations, right? What has highest precedence here? It should be our exponent. In my code, however, I've implemented that exponent via multiplication, which means that this multiplication and this division, and this multiplication all have the same precedence level, which means that we're gonna just execute it from left to right. I need to do this specifically first. And so to force precedence, I'm just gonna put parentheses around it. Right? We can just willy nilly throw some parentheses in there and it will tell it to execute this first. Sweet. So I feel like I have the equation in, I'm going to check it. Earth's acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. So what this number should be is 9.8 and some change. 
let's see what it is. So I'm going to use a system.out.print line to print off my earth gravity. And maybe I would consider annotating that. Let's just go ahead and run it and then I'll annotate it. Boom, 9.8 and some change. This is pretty precise. It's more precise than if we just threw in 9.8, right? You ask any physicist that's familiar with this, and I'm talking like, you know, students, they're gonna tell you 9.8 meters per second per second, 9.8 meters per second squared. But we're actually more precise than that because we're using the formula. So um, I said I would annotate this, so let's do that, right? Earth's acceleration, acceleration due to gravity. Let me uh, spell check acceleration real fast. Acceleration, yeah. We did it. Okay. <coughs> so that's kind of the first part of our program, right? The next thing we want to do is figure out effectively the exact same thing here it is and actually worked out. Next thing we'll do is figure out the exact same thing, but for the moon. The formula is the same. My long-term goal is to set up a ratio, the moon's acceleration due to gravity over the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. We've already got Earth's acceleration due to gravity. We need the moon's, okay? So I'm going to basically reuse this formula. It's the same formula, but my numbers change. G, gravitational constant, the exact same. Let's go ahead and kind of maybe get started, right? I'm going to maybe start with the, let's start with our variables, I guess. G already exists. I can just reuse it. I don't have to remake this variable. Here is an advantage of a variable, right? This is a wonky number. Instead of having to plug it in twice whenever I go to calculate the formula, I'm able just to refer to G. So I don't even have to do anything with G. We're already on mass. More specifically, the moon's mass. The moon's mass, as measured in kilograms, is 7.35 e squared. e squared, uh, e to the 22nd. And then the other thing we're going to need is the moon's radius, which is 1.74 e to the 6. Thank you, IntelliJ. Okay, so those are the three variables. My G, my mass, my radius. We're ready to calculate the moon's gravity. I'm gonna reuse G. Instead of Earth mass, we're gonna plug in our moon mass. And then we're gonna do our moon radius times moon radius. This should give me the moon's acceleration due to gravity. I'm going to copy this print statement. I'm gonna say moon's acceleration due to gravity, and we're gonna plug in moon gravity instead. Okay, I'm running my program. We're gonna get Earth's acceleration due to gravity, very precise. Moon's acceleration due to gravity, 1.619. That one, I don't quite know as often. Why don't we check it? Moon's acceleration towards the Earth. Oh, that's frightening. Uh, due to gravity. The internet says 1.625. Yeah, we there. Okay, so. I have Earth's acceleration due to gravity. I have the moon's acceleration due to gravity. Uh, something that's kind of missing here is maybe our units. I would consider maybe doing, uh, what is it, meters per second squared? I don't know, that's difficult. Maybe not. You know what it is. So these are the two numbers that we need to set up our ratio, right? So I'm going to create a double. I'm just gonna call it ratio. And it is going to be the moon's acceleration due to gravity Right, which is moon gravity in this case, divided by the Earth's acceleration due to gravity. This is a double. This is a double. The result's going to be a double. I'm storing it into ratio. Why don't we see what that number is? System dot out dot print line on our ratio. Uh, 
Um, for reference, the moon is about like, it's like 16%. Yeah, 16.5%. So I have this ratio. It's really precise because we've performed the calculations ourselves. I am ready to do the weight conversion. All it simply is going to be is you take a weight and then you multiply it by this and voila. Okay, that's where scanner is going to come into play. There's four steps to implementing scanner. My very first step is to import. Even above my class header, I'm going to import java.util.scanner. It's gray because we haven't made a scanner object yet. It doesn't necessarily matter where you do it, as long as you do it before you're ready to capture data. Here, I've just done some calculations. I've printed them out to the console. I think maybe we're ready now to get uh, input from the user. Again, it doesn't really matter where. You could put it here. You could put it up top. I'm going to create a scanner object, and I like to call my scanner input. There's other options. A very popular one is KB. Why don't we try that to kind of demonstrate the idea that your scanner doesn't have to be called input. So I have a scanner KB, and that is a new scanner that reads from system.in. Left hand side, we're creating a variable. This variable is called KB. The data type is scanner. KB, this scanner variable, is going to point to or save reference a scanner object. This particular scanner object is going to read from system.in, the keyboard. My third step is to prompt the user. In this case, we want a weight. Please enter a weight. Now that prompt is very simplistic. So uh, what I would actually probably do in practice is that I would include some system.out.print lines to indicate what the purpose of the program is. That way when we get to this prompt and it's just asking for a weight, the user knows exactly what we're looking for. I'll come back and maybe add those annotations. We're on our fourth and final step, which is to actually capture the user's input. Now, one thing I want you to consider is what data type are we working with, right? Should it be an integer because we're only working with whole numbers? Or as it turns out, we're not working with whole numbers, right? We can have, weight can be a, a fractional part, right? It can have a fractional part. So I'm gonna create a double, I'm gonna call it weight. And weight is going to be equal to, in this case, kb.nextdouble. Well, why kb? Why not input? Well, I call this particular scanner KB. So whatever you call the scanner here dictates the variable name. It dictates how you refer to your scanner later on. So I'm telling KB, my scanner, to get the very next double the user enters. We're gonna take that double, we're gonna save it in a variable called weight. And once it's in this variable, it's in my program. Okay, that's our four steps implementing scanner. We need to import, we need to construct a scanner object, we need to prompt the user, and then we need to capture their input. Okay, so sweet, I've got my ratio. I now have a weight, we're ready to do the conversion. Um, I'm going to ultimately just save that into a variable. Why don't we call that moon weight? All it's going to be is our weight times our ratio. Order there does not matter. And finally, we're going to tell the user what the output of this conversion is, right? If you weighed plus weight on earth uh, this indentation here is for our use you would weigh plus our moon weight On the moon. 
Okay, a lot going on here with this one sister now dot print line. Here I have some text, right? It's quoted. This will literally be printed, including the space. So this says if you weighed, and then we kind of alternate from that text to weight, which is a double variable, right? So this is going to say if you weighed, and then there's some number here. This number happened to be the original weight that we got from the user on earth, comma. Here I'm using a plus to go down a line. Now, I'm not creating a new line in my output. This is solely for the look here in the code, right? We don't want to go too far over. We want our code in our field of view because it makes it a little bit easier to read. But if you've got to like scroll over to find the rest of this, right? If I put this all on one line, which is possible. It's starting to get out there. In fact, this little line here is kind of indicating, hey, you're going too far, right? We could keep going. I don't want to delete the whole thing, but like I could keep going, right? And you see that our program <laughs> starts to scroll. That's too much. It is a good idea to try to keep your code kind of in your field of view. So if you wait, we go from text to the variable back to text continuation of text then we switch to a variable and then we're back to text so you see these plus signs are allowing me to alternate between text and annotation and some type of output let's try what we got I'm gonna tell my program to run first thing we're gonna see is still these numbers right Earth's acceleration due to gravity blah 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 they're kind of our test numbers and then it says please enter a weight well I weigh a very modest 125 pounds it says if you weighed 125 on earth you would weigh you would weigh this amount on the moon effectively 20 pounds now there's a noticeable lack of units here right i said pounds um i want you to think for a moment right some people uh lots of comments i get in the past is like well we should include units here right we should say pounds Here's the thing, we don't have to include units. I want you to kind of pause and think about why, but ultimately because we're doing a ratio, it doesn't matter what the units are. Whatever units you put in here is the resulting units you get here. Because again, this is just a ratio, it's a percentage, okay? So if I put in stones, if you weighed 125 stones on earth, you would weigh 20.625 stones on the moon, right? Whatever your input unit is, that's the same as your output unit. Okay, let's try it again. And this is the beauty of scanner. I just tell the program to run. It's going to go through all of its stuff and then it's telling me to put in a weight. Um, how about 9,001 stones? If you weighed 9,001 stones on earth, you would weigh 1,485 stones on the moon. There's our sweet conversion. It's a lot like temp converter, and then it's just a simple, you know, get a number from the user, perform the conversion. But as you can imagine, like this is like scalable, you could do different celestial bodies and that sort of thing. Okay, the last thing that I would consider adding to this program is some type of annotation telling the user what in the world this even does. Maybe it's the first thing. Uh, these test numbers, we're going to end up doing something with them later. Um, it doesn't really matter where you put this, but I would maybe welcome the user. Uh, to welcome, welcome to Moonway. And I'm going to use a different SOP so that I do generate a new line in my output. I'll show you when I run it. Um, this program converts your weight on earth here I would consider trying to narrow our field of view this program converts your weight on earth to you, th th your weight on the moon maybe something about units not mattering let's see what this looks like now I'm going to tell it to run. Welcome to Moonway. 
this program converts your weight on Earth to your weight on the moon. One thing I like you to notice, right, because I used an SOP here, that's all on its own line. I'm then using a separate SOP to create this on one line. Notice that my indentation here in the actual code is for my benefit. The only way that we're able to generate new lines in our program down here is by using the system.out.print line. It's waiting for a wait, and there we go. That's moon weight, and that's the beauty of Scanner.